appreciate your concern, interest in the budget, and what we're doing about the federal budget deficit. I understand you've been briefed in some detail on our fiscal year 1987 budget proposal and the reasons why we believe this proposal is the best way to reduce the deficit. And I'm going to add just a little bit to the discussion here. I think that 86 is a year of decision. I, the year to decide whether we have the will to at last bring federal spending under control, remove the last remaining obstacle to a future of growth and prosperity. It's the year to decide whether we can make the tough decisions that we agreed to last year when the grand government Collins legislation became law. And uh, it's the year to make clear to the world that our commitment to peace through strength will not be compromised. It's the year to maintain our continued opposition to raising taxes, which I believe could harm the economy and take money from Americans in order to protect government programs that we don't need and can't afford. Today, deficit reduction is the law of the land. Brand Rudman Holland's mandates a declining deficit path leading to a balanced budget in fiscal year 1991. So the deficit will be cut. The big question is how? Graham Rutland Holland's automatic spending cuts are <coughs> only if Congress abdicates its constitutional responsibility and fails to pass a budget that meets the deficit targets. In other words, Congress still has a choice. It can be responsible by making those careful and sometimes difficult spending decisions, or it can simply drop the ball and let the across-the-board cuts take over. The budget that I will soon be submitting to Congress was carefully prepared by taking into account our defense needs, the proper role of government, and the Graham Rudman Hollings deficit targets. It will meet the 87 deficit target of $144 billion without harming the economy through a tax increase or compromising our national security. It will preserve the social safety net for those in need. It will not penalize older Americans by reducing Social Security benefits. And as I'm sure Don, Cap, and Jim have mentioned, our budget will include a modest increase in defense to sustain recent improvements in capability. Now, some will say that's too much for defense, but the proposed funding levels for national security in our budget are consistent with the real growth rate that's, and growth path that's agreed to by myself and the Congress last year. And if Cap hasn't already told you, in spite of all the drumbeat of propaganda, the defense budget is little more than a fourth of our budget. And that is counter to a history, well, historically, back through the years, defense was considered to be basically about a half of federal spending because it is the number one task of the federal government. Higher taxes are no cure for the deficit. Reducing the deficit through tax hikes, I think, would impose substantial new tax burdens on American households. And as experience has proved, it reduce incentives for Americans to work and save and invest, and thus choke off the creation of new jobs. And experience has also shown that higher taxes do not necessarily go, go to reduce the deficit. More often are used to justify increased government spending. One line that was spoken in a debate in the floor of the Senate back in 1913 when they were passing the income tax amendment. And I think it's something we should always remember that one senator stood up and eloquently pronounced that we had to have the tax not for government's needs, but for government's wants. And he thought that was a good idea, and I think we've had too much of government's wants over recent years. <coughs> The current economic expansion is well into its third year, as you know, and over 9 million jobs have been created since November of 1982. Inflation, I hesitate to use the term under control, it has been brought down to about a third or less of what it was when we came here, but I don't think inflation is under control until it's zero. And uh, We've been having some meetings around this table as to just how we're going to accomplish that, even though we've been down on 4% now for quite some time. Nominal interest rates are coming down and are well below the levels that were reached in the 70s and early 80s. The 
excessive federal spending and a large federal deficit are the last major obstacles I think black blocking our path to lasting prosperity. The budget that we're sending up on February 4th will put us in the right track to a balanced budget, as I said, by 1991. Then I feel that we should go all out for, if not, if not before then, then, for a constitutional amendment that bans forever federal deficit spending. So we think that we're we will reduce the deficit while promoting economic growth and meeting our national security requirements. We've made the tough decisions, and now it's time to see if Congress is up to the challenge of passing a responsible budget. I need your support and those of all of your colleagues, and I encourage you to make your views known. We're in for a tough battle, but together we can reduce the deficit and set America on a path to permanent prosperity. Now that's enough for me. I'd like to hear what's on your mind and what questions you might have. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I have a very special group to introduce you to today. This is Dennis Fox, first place, best in the world on advertising design, Mr. President. Well, congratulations. Thank you. This is Kenneth Anderson who is third place in Certificate of Excellence in Radio and TV Repair. Congratulations to you. This is Anthony DeCellis, fourth place Certificate of Excellence in Millie. This way they're taking a picture. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Joe Haas, fourth place in Industrial Electronics. Pleased to see you and congratulations to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Ricky Kelly, fourth place in automobile repair. Well, nice to see you. I didn't have a little knock. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. This is Aaron McGinty, fourth well, place in turning. Well, nice to see you. Yes, and you can talk to you. Yeah, I'm right there in the three, isn't it? That's right. I see you. Congratulations. Thank you. This is Oscar Mercado who won a Certificate of Excellence in Brick Lane. Well, nice to see you with a happy Congratulations. This is Larry Johnson, an old friend, Chief Executive yes. Officer. Good to see you again. Yeah. I was with you in Louisville. Yes. It's a good day. We enjoyed very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is Harold Lewis, who is the Chief Director of the U.S. Skill Olympics well, with Bickham. Good to see you. Appreciate the opportunity. And this is James Voorhees, Vice uh, President of General Motors, who represents 500 corporate sponsors of this program. Delighted to be here. Pleased to have you here. Now I think I'm supposed to get on here someplace. Yes, I had an interest that some of you did. I was in 1983 in Louisville, Kentucky. Right. We often now. play that speech in our world. Yes. How do you do? 
Get a sign of president. Mm -hmm. That's great. This all super. Bobby, could you possibly get a sign out? saddle head first as well. <laughs> <laughs> they began carving uh, a notch around mm -hmm. that big thing so that they could dolly the rope real quick as they now do with the horn. That's what led to the horn in the western side. Mm -hmm. but, well, That's I think they want us over here. Yes, they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mrs. Davis. Uh, you're, you're not in my picture. Does this look like a Christmas card shop? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 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 That's the one I've never seen. I know we, we're going to, we need to have you come here. It's probably the most fantastic sporting event you've ever seen with a crowd. And I know you started the race at Daytona last year for a miniature from uh, your aircraft. Yeah. With Bill Grant. That's yeah. what, uh, remember, that's terrific. Uh, we'll have to be after him to, to come only if we have a, he promises an answer victory. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, maybe, maybe not. Well, that's 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 what I understand. It's terrific. For any president, because he's totally right. This year they're going to they're going to televise it live for the first time in the history of the race. It's always been a delayed. Uh, so, uh, anybody, anybody, anybody. It's a great honor for us to be able to be here today. I thank these yeah, friends for it. Very, very proud and happy. Days about a race driver that they picked you up that they sort of invoke his name, the Goffwood. <laughs> and uh, when I was a sports announcer in Des Moines. And uh, Barney Oldfield came there. He worked for Chrysler at the time, sport uh, convertible. And then he, and they, what he would do, it was the state fair. So he would come there to appear and have a lecture on safety and driving. So I interviewed him on our station. And then I had to go out to the fair, and he was doing So I rode out with him. And you won't believe it, it just couldn't happen.